Okay, so it's recording now. So <clears throat> what I do, um, I don't have an actual form, but I, I, I do a lot of spheres, just um, I'll show you. It's kind of good practice. So like when I get, um, I got a set of watercolor pencils. And so what I do is I swatch them out and I kind of do them like little spheres. If you can see like they each have a little highlight and they're darker on the other side. So it kind of shows me all the different um, values that I can use with that color. So it's just kind of like a color chart. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a sphere. And you can start out by taking a plate and drawing a circle so that you have a perfect circle. Um, I'm just going to break. I broke my willow charcoal. So I don't like the way that edge is, the way I have those two edges. So I'm going to knock down some of the edges. And so I'm just going to find my form and I can refine it as I go along. And I'm going to say the light's coming from this direction. So my highlight's going to be about right here. And I'm going to have a cast shadow that comes out this way. So have you already done this, Tiana? Um, yes. Okay, well, sorry. <laughs> oh no, no, it's it's good to see though, because okay. it you and then like the video, it looks a lot easier than it is to actually do <laughs> and um, to get it get it like yeah, and you know, part of it is uh, having control of your materials, and the other part is just really um, doing it a bunch of times and figuring out what you did wrong and how to do it better. I mean, I'm not perfect at it, and I would be better if I had a ball in front of me to look at, but I do know that um, I have cast shadow and if the shadow sort of touches the bottom but it doesn't wrap around both sides of the bottom and it's going to probably come out over here a little and there's going to be some reflected light that hits here and I'm going to have so if the widest part of the ball is about here, my darkest parts are going to be about here. And the nice thing about charcoal is that it's very um, malleable. You can move it around easily. Once you put it down, it doesn't have to stay where it is. A lot of people left really harsh lines like this and then a big, huge highlight. So you really have to start to push some of this charcoal up. So that you have more of a graduated Ball. I think I can ignore that call. And I think my highlight is got getting a little too far down to the bottom. So I can always take it out again. And you can see how it moves around a lot. So I have trouble keeping it where I want to. At this point, I might want to switch over to my compressed charcoal because it's going to stay 
where I put it a little bit better, but I'm going to go ahead with a little bit more of the yellow and then I'm going to switch to the compressed charcoal. Another thing is if you see like around here, it's all kind of um, indistinct edges. At the end, I can clarify exactly where my edge is. But that's part of the process because when you use your fingers, you're going to kind of go over where you're really intending to stop. So that's my arrow. So this is still willow charcoal. I think some of the um, balls that I've seen, the spears that I've seen so far, like people, some people had a hard time with the blotchiness. And I think that what happened is that they didn't know how to get this willow charcoal to stay where they wanted it to, to, which is hard to do. And that's why we have this, this, this stays better. So, <clears throat> Some people ended up with these really harsh lines because they couldn't figure out how to get that part darker and still blend it. So I think that's good enough with the willow charcoal because I'm missing my core shadow, which is the darkest part here, which is then allows this um, to be a little lighter, this highlight. So I'm going to break this now because that piece is too big. So I'm going to come in with this dark willow charcoal. You can see how much darker it is. And that's why you really want to reserve it for once you have your form in and you know where your darkest values are going to be. You can begin to put this in. And I might have gone up there too far. Pull some of that down. I use my fingers a lot, but you can use your blender. I know a lot of people don't like using their fingers because it feels more messy, and it, it is more messy. And it's easier to smudge your paper. So everybody has to just kind of work however they feel is the best solution for them. And that's a little dark there. And I think my core shadow would be something like right here. So I can leave that as long as I make this part darker. And it's just this sort of like one area here that is your darkest area. And it doesn't have to be a really harsh line like that. I'm going to keep softening it so that it's kind of a gradual. And I think this maybe should be. Sometimes I have to stand back and see the um, circle because I'm losing my roundness. I think this needs to come down a little here. Take some of this off of here. Now this removes it, but you know, it leaves spots but you can just blend those away. Right, 
So my area of expertise is the sculpture, and that's why, like, um, some people can do this much quicker than I can, but flow is okay too, as long as you're paying attention to what you're doing. And I can tell I have too much dark hair. Be wider. And I think that I'm kind of flat on this side of mine. That's yes, on the low. And one of the things that I can do right now, and I know that that's too dark, but I can lighten it up. But what I want to do right now is I just want to see if this is round. And that dark edge needs to come out more and away from here. So if you have your reference, it's a little easier because you're looking at it. So I can tell I'm off here from round, out of round. So fix that and now it's starting to look like a spear that I would give somebody full points for. Now this is the willow. And most of your reflected light, brightest reflected light is gonna be here because on this side there's a shadow. So, all right. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a plate and see how close I am to my What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 2B pencil and I'm going to kind of lightly draw a circle. And I'm just kind of testing to see how close I am to round. So that's um, a bigger plate. This, okay, so if I look at it and I look at how much I have, maybe I'm a little, got to erase a little bit here. And I think that it's, here. So I'm going to use my green eraser. Or not. Is, oh, here it is. So, to, um, well, I'm going to finish sort of softening some of this. And I think that this is a little dark up here too. I don't like some of that. And you know, your highlight doesn't necessarily have to be the white of your page because there's always some value on objects. So let me stand back. It looks too flat now.
because these are half tones here. So these aren't going to be quite as dark as down here, and they were starting to be about the same. So I think that's starting to look a little better, but I think I can still take some of this up here. And I'm going to see what it looks like if I just clean it up. And you can see that I keep getting like my fingerprints on it. So it kind of is a battle to keep your paper clean. If I was actually doing a drawing, I would probably try to have a piece of paper covering parts of it that I'm not working on. And so I think I'm done with the sphere itself. And does that help you, Ada? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, but I'm going to work on the shadow a little bit more and then I'll move on. And with the graphite, you can um, put down graphite using your chamois. The way I showed you in the, um, the demo for the shoe, which is done in charcoal, but you can do the same thing in graphite. So, now I have, so I have my reflected light here and occlusion shadow here. So now I'm gonna, usually the shadow is darker, closer to the object and it kind of dissipates as it, leaves the volume so it's just kind of an oval shape maybe a little bit more here that's too far because the light's hitting it this way so maybe this is going to be a little more oval, kind of come down this way. So it's going to do that. I'm going to get rid of some of it here. So it might be a good idea to wait to put the shadow in until you see where your highlight is and the rest of the sphere. So this is my compressed charcoal. Compressed charcoal is the darker charcoal. Maybe something like that. And I don't want to be too dark. The one thing about the shadows is that there's um, darks and lights in the shadows. They're not a solid value. They're a little more delicate than that. So. You want to let there be variation in the darkness of your shadow, but it's usually the darkest right under the object. So, and I might need to. And I can use my blender and get right underneath there.
All right, so that's the ball, the, the sphere. And if you submitted something like that, you would get full credit. So mine's a little dark. A lot of people have little, um, much lighter ones, and that's okay too. Any questions? No. <laughs> so useful. I'm going to move that and. I'm going to wipe my hands here. So I have a page that has all these books on it, and I'm going to post it at the end of this um, module. Um, this week, what you're doing is the on Friday or Saturday, the shoe is due. So there's already a video posted for the shoe, and I think it's. Um, shows you everything you need. Also, if you um, see the shoe drawing, I did the same shoe for another class. So there's actually two different videos. Like if you go to the YouTube channel that I post all my videos on, you can see there's sort of like several of them. So um, you can, you know, and you can fast forward and look for certain things. Uh, the way he draws it in the video is slightly different. He uses a toothbrush to move around his charcoal. Um, I tried it, didn't work for me, but <laughs> everybody uses different tools. So this is um, a book on perspective drawing. Next week, the module is gonna go into perspective. Um, perspective is just that like, if you're outside in the landscape, one of the things that you've noticed is that the clouds that are closest to you, they're, big and fluffy and they're the top they're the highest up and as things go back in space they get smaller and further away but they're really probably the same size they just look smaller because as things recede back in space they get smaller and so we have formulas on how that works so I do have a couple of books that if you're interested more in learning more about perspective, because we just do simple one and two point perspective enough to get you to be able to go outside, do some urban sketching, draw a room interior and the, that sort of thing. So um, if you want or interested in more intensive perspective drawing, a book like this would be good. And I, I have these books, um, pictures of them with the information. So this one is pretty old, but perspective doesn't change. Um, Bruno Leski discovered it or you know developed the process. So this is like one point perspective when you're looking straight at something. When it becomes two point perspective is if you are looking at it from the corner and two sides would be going back in space. And that's pretty much as far as we're gonna go. You're gonna do a few perspective drawings but that lets you know what this book was like. Um, the samples of for perspective drawing, the instructions that I took, I took from this book. I just kind of scanned some of the images from this book and placed them into, I think these are the pages that I might have scanned because I took them out of the book. So um, these the vanishing point, horizon line, those are some terms you'll learn. But this is, um, I think this book is easier to understand for somebody who just is an artist. Somebody who's maybe more interested in architectural rendering might want a more intensive book. And I think this one's more intensive. This is, um, easier to understand, not so intensive. So those are the two books on perspective. So lighting, which is what we've been working on. Light is what defines um, forms on a page as being three-dimensional instead of just being flat. So you remember I had the circle of a drawing of a circle and it's flat, and then you add shading and value in it and it starts to look like a ball, like a sphere. So Light for visual artists just take that idea. You see the sphere in the background and um, gives you instructions on balancing light and shade um, 
in compositions, dra dramatic compositions. So it's like comparing white balance. So it's um, it's very intense on color, but it also talks about light direction. So somebody who's interested in animation, it has um, this way of showing the different ways of light reflecting on a face. Here it's very flat. Here this um, character becomes very three-dimensional. Here it's just a silhouette. Um, lighting setups. So it talks about things like dramatic lighting because when you see this, it's just you know a very frontal light with a lot of light flooded. And then here the light comes from one side, so the other side of the face is shaded. Here, um, it's lit from above, so there's really dark shadows in the eye sockets and under the nose because the nose sticks out, and here because the whole head is shading that part of the neck. This is um, lighting from below, which is probably the most dramatic because it makes look people look very almost sinister. So um, because it's just not a way that we're used to seeing people. So the light's coming from below and it's highlighting the eyebrows. Um, it's highlighting the underneath the nose. It's highlighting the bottom part of the lip. So you can see the neck, which you don't see here because the light's coming from the top. Here, the light's coming from behind. So you don't see very much. You just see a little bit of a reflection here. So those are the kinds of things that um, this book focuses on, natural light. So it talks about like mid-morning sunlight, the difference between mid-morning sunlight, late afternoon sunlight, front sunlight, dusk, side lighting, which is kind of what I did in the bone. So, that's this book, Light for Visual Artists. Um, and this is actually a good book for photographers as well. So this book is actually about drawing. And this is a concise guide to drawing by David Faber and Daniel Mendelowitz. Um, a lot of the faculty used to have people buy this book. But because of the escalating costs, I don't think there's very many students that do anyway or anymore anyways. But you can see here where they give you the same sort of detailed studies about light. And every book sort of organizes things differently. Um, but most courses start out with line work and value, which is what we're doing. So here, this book, um, has the nature and purpose of drawing. So it gets into sort of historical aspects as well. Um, and talks about just drawing in general. And then the initial experience, the self-reliant purity of drawing. So it, this is a book that is going to go beyond what we go into in the semester. So texture, expression, perception, response, line, the self-reliant purity of drawing. So it's just a good thing to know that these books are here. This book is not too thick, um, but it has a lot of good information in it. This is a more sort of like um, book you would go to the library and go, I want to learn how to draw. And you would see this, oh, okay, draw naturally. And this is more of a sort of academic book that um, college professors use to teach drawing. This is more of a book that you would just go buy on your own to learn how to draw. So um, it talks mostly about shapes. Shape is everything. So it talks about how if you focus on the shape, which kind of is Betty Edwards. And so um, it's more of a book for a hobbyist, and that's kind of what this, so it talks about materials, uh, line, 
basic shapes, which we've been working with these two, the basic geometric forms like you've been working with. Um, under, are you going to work with next week? Have you, what, was the sphere from this week or last week? Do you guys remember? This week? This week? Wait. I have two classes. One of them is ahead of you guys because they're going to be done in eight weeks. This one is 16 weeks, so we're going slower. Oh, you guys just know you're next week you're doing the sphere, right? No, you can do the sphere this week. You do it before you do the shoe. So, okay. Right. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, so that's that book. This is another book that is used by college professors. It's not that much different than this book, different artists, um, much fatter book. So it's like twice the size. And the difference is that this book doesn't just give you instruction, but it actually gives you a page with assignments. So it takes you through a course and has you basically do kind of like what I'm having you do in the course, but you just use this book. So, and it actually, I think it actually comes with a CD also, but I think I gave that to a student. So this is um, the last book I have to talk about, I think. Yeah. And this is just another book on drawing essentials. So it's also used by college professors. And it just is, sticks with the essentials. It's not that fast, kind of in between the other two. And one of the things is there, there's always, they're always coming out with new additions. So you can see how line drawing and proportion comes into play and shadows to create depth. But I would say if you're interested in purchasing one of these books, I wouldn't worry about which edition, whatever edition you can get at a good price is good because a lot of times these, um, there's very little that has changed from one edition to the next edition. So, um, hmm. It's telling me that this is going to end in 10 minutes. So um, do you have any questions? No? <laughs> Tiana? I'm going to um, be online until 2 o'clock. So if you are working and you um, have anything that you want or even like during the week if you like get stuck on something like Layla like if you have trouble with the spheres and you wanted help you can just email me and I can always just jump on zoom for a few minutes with you to show you it didn't take me that long to do that demo so um I'm going to stop recording now uh stop